Hello. Brendan, you're going to go all the way to the end. They're making him sit as far away as possible. Um, all right, Macy Barber is up next. She trains out of Team Alpha Male, and she is ranked number eight in the women's flyweight division. What about that dominant performance she had in Jacksonville? Give it up for Macy. And this excellent outfit. You're going to go next to Brendan. Yep, we're working our way down. Up next, he won season 17 of The Ultimate Fighter, recently defeated Chris Curtis at UFC 287. He's ranked number 12 in the middleweight division. That's Kelvin Gastelum. Kelvin, you look so sharp. You're gonna go down next to Macy. She is a pioneer of women's MMA. She's the former UFC women's bantamweight champion. She is a future Hall of Famer for sure. She owns the number 12 spot at 135. Here is Misha Tate. Everybody killing the fashion game today. I love it. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, and finally, not only does he have a number three next to his name at 170, but he is unbeaten in his last nine outings. He hosts one of the best podcasts out there called Remember the Show. You remember his name, Bilal Muhammad. Oh, man. You've become the heel. <laughs> Media, I don't know if there's a microphone floating around. Okay, Jose Young's already got it, so we'll just dive right in. Jose, you're up. Uh, I'll start with Macy Barber. Back right here. Obviously, you're coming off one of the most impressive wins of your career. You made a little bit of noise talking about Juliana. Juliana responded. It seems like you even teased going up to 135. So I guess my question is, what's next for you in your fight career? If I was offered that fight at 135 to fight Juliana, I'd do it tomorrow. Um, I'm trying for that fight, but we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I'm actually supposed to talk with Hunter and Mick soon, so I should have an answer for that soon, but uh, I totally would go and take that belt from Juliana. So, Misha, how do you think Macy would do it, 135 pounds? Is that to me? Sorry, I didn't quite hear that. I want to, Macy's teasing a possible fight against Juliana, says she would want that. You're obviously friends with her. How do you think she would do at 135 pounds? I would have to study, you guys. It's, I, don't, uh, I don't do that anymore. I don't get paid to sit and watch fights. I only have a million and one other jobs to do, so I wish I could break that down for you. But to be fair, I think it'd be a hell of a fight just because, I mean, I've, I've been a fan of Macy's for a long time. I mean, she's a hell of a woman and a, a great savage, and, and Juliana always brings it. So lover, hater, whatever, I think everybody enjoys watching that woman fight. So, yeah, it's a good fight for anybody if you want some action. Question for Calvin Gaslam. You're going back to welterweight fighting Shavkat, a fight that not a lot of people seem to want. So why specifically did you want to take Shavkat, a very dangerous opponent, for your return to welterweight? I say, why not? I mean, I want to fight the best in the world. This will be just a stepping stone to the world title. He's obviously looked very impressive, very dominant, even his win over Jeff Neal. He kind of overcame some obstacles in there. So what do you make of his skill set inside the octagon? What was that? What do you make of Shafsat's skills as a welterweight? Oh, man, he's com com incredibly durable. He's, he's good everywhere, good striking, amazing wrestler. Uh, I just, I, I, you know, he, he goes in the fire, much a lot like Charles Oliveira. They go into the fire, right? And somehow things work out for them. And so far, things have worked out for Shafkat. But, uh, you know, once I put these hands on him, who knows? This is a question for everyone on the panel. We'll start with Bilal. Tomorrow night, Poirier and Gaethje are fighting for the BMF title, but in your opinion, who is the biggest BMF in the UFC? Uh, the biggest BMF in the UFC, I would say... I would say Dustin, because he already has the win right now. So I'm going to go with Dustin, the diamond. Uh, so I would pick Dustin with that one. Aisha? Oh, same question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see. Somebody who hasn't won yet. Um, I feel as it really cheesy to say the same thing, but I feel like Bilal stole my answer. <laughs> um, I'll go with I'll go with Justin just because I'm Woo! right. Woo! Woo! <laughs> the love and hate, a lot of love. Justin's uh, he's one of the baddest to ever do it, and he has yet to to touch that that gold. But I think uh, this BMF belt would suit him well. Kelvin, if you fought and they offered you the BMF belt, would you put a lot of stock in it, or would you just think, uh, this is nothing compared to the real UFC title? No, there, there's definitely some stock in it, but there's nothing 
quite like chasing that UFC championship. That's, that's, that's really the goal. Uh, but there, you know, don't take credit away from, from that BMF belt. There's some stock in it. Macy, you've been called a savage by Dana White. If there was a female BMF belt, either retired or still around, who would that go to? I don't know, but I sure would be fighting for it. And Brendan, for you, outside the main event tomorrow, if there was another guy who was potentially capable of fighting for that BMF belt, who would you have? Man, that's a super tough one. I'm just so set on this Dustin, Justin fight, man. Fellow Louisiana boy with Dustin Poirier. Uh, that's the ultimate BMF right there. Question for uh, Brendan Allen. You tweeted out recently you want to get back in before the end of the year. You called out guys like Vittori, Whitaker, Cannonier. Anybody taking the bait yet? Nobody yet, man. I'm looking for that fight that's going to catapult me to that, that title talk. Um, I know how good I am. I'm just show that I'm a level above the guy just enough to finish them, and that's what I go out there and do. But I'm looking for that fight that's going to show everyone how good I am and catapult me into that, uh, that title talks. And a uh, question for Bilal Muhammad. I know you were kind of hoping to be on deck if Colby and Leon were going to fight in Abu Dhabi. Wherever that fight takes place, are you going to be ready as the backup to jump in? And new, I appreciate you guys. Uh, so all the ones booing, I'm a, I apologize for the Bulls beating the Jazz a couple times. Shout out to Carl Malone, he's my dude still. Um, but yeah, obviously I'm going to stay ready. I'll be ready for all these, both of these guys. I think I'm the rightful champion right now. I'm the only one with five uh, ranked wins. I'm the one fighting the best guys in the division. I just dominated Gilbert Burns on three weeks notice. So you give me eight weeks to beat any of those bums, I kill them. Do we have any more questions Fudge. from the media? Nope, all right, the spotlight is on you, sir. I see you wore your best shirt. <laughs> what do you got? Representing Destin tonight, so. Uh, what is the most exciting thing that is happening in each one of your careers in the UFC right now? Like, this is for all of you. I think the most exciting thing is, I'm, I know that I got the title shot next. That's what my dream is, that's what you work for. So now that I, that's what I work for, now I got it. I would say Amanda just retired and it's anybody's belt at 135. So that's where I'm headed back to. By the way, Kevin Gaslam, I went and saw the Izzy fight and that's still the most exciting fight I've ever been to live and in person. I know you lost, but I'm just saying, that was the most exciting fight. Thank you, man. I had fun. Thank you. Yeah. You want me to answer that yeah. question? Yeah. Man, I'm in a good place in my life. I just signed a new six fight deal with the UFC. Got a little pay bump. Um, I got an incredible fight coming up. You know, I, you know, I couldn't ask for anything better. I'm living the dream, guys. I think for me, you know, I'm riding that high of just finishing Amanda Hibas and uh, getting ready to see what's next. And, you know, the sky really is the limit for me. So it's just life is, it just, life is a high for me. I think for me, I think I've earned a shot at the top, top five. So, again, I'm looking for that big fight that's going to catapult me into those title talks because that's what I'm looking for. By the way, your, skill, your skills have developed significantly since I've watched you start, Brendan Allen. Thank you so very you know. much, man. Thank you. Uh, yet to come. More to come. <laughs> All right, let's go over to this side. Go ahead. This microphone. All right. Yep. <laughs> hey, guys. So I, I, I'm pretty new to this sport and watching it. I'm fascinated by what you guys do. And as I was watching the videos, I noticed that you guys have different coaches for boxing or for jujitsu or for grappling, and uh, I know that mindset's such a huge aspect of the sport for you guys. And so my question, I'm, I'm in the sales world, and so a lot of times salesmen will hire mindset coaches to work with them. So my question to y'all is, have you guys ever invested into a mindset coach, or does your coach kind of play that role? And if so, what's been the impact on that, on your career and in your fighting? Yeah, I've been fighting in the UFC for 10 years, right? Just three years ago, I acquired a mental performance coach, and it's made a huge difference, brother. I mean, huge difference. I won't go into a fight without getting, you know, I, I call him a mentor, you know, getting this guy helping me throughout camp. I mean, it just eliminates all the BS in your life to make sure you achieve your goals that you need to achieve. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, I hired a sports psychologist for me just to help with emotions and 
how you deal with the anxiety and everything leading up to the fight, all the negativity from online to in person and everything that comes along with fighting. It's, uh, it's hard to deal with on top of already training as hard as we do. So I hired a sports psychologist before my Christoph Jocko fight and uh, I think the results are, have showed in those fights since. So cool. I, oh yeah. I'll take one. So I, I first worked with a sports psychologist when I trained with Team Alpha Male out of Sacramento, which I know you're with now. And uh, that's kind of when I got my taste for that. And I thought this was a great thing and I needed more of it. I also have worked with a hypnotherapist. And then the UFC actually has a uh, MICA, has a sports psychologist, um, like a mental coach. Maybe that's yeah. not the right term, mental coach, uh, on staff for us. So we can actually go and take advantage of that, meet with him for free. So I do once a week because that's been a game changer. And uh, one aspect, obviously, a big aspect is the fighting part. But for me, it's like the whole life of my whole mindset, like learning to be a present person. What, what do I want out of this moment? You know, because sometimes we forget that, right? We forget what we want out of the moment. And it sounds crazy to be in a fight and not know exactly what it is that you want in that moment. But I've been there because I'm such a veteran that's like sometimes I've just gone through autopilot in a fight and I really didn't like that. So this has been a huge change for me working with Micah in this past year. So I'm excited for my next fight because I think it's going to be a game changer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. We good over here? Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, fighters. This question is for everybody, even Megan. I want to know what drives you in the fight, in the third round, in the trenches, what do you go to to pull motivation from? God, just for everybody. Just for everybody. That's a that's a hard question for Megan to answer. Uh, my, but, what drives me is my attitude. Uh, but for me, it's just knowing the work that I put in. If if I didn't leave no stone unturned, um, I know that I did everything I could do. So I'm not gonna make that work for nothing. I'm in that third round. I know what I got to do. I got to go back to uh, what's in the gas tank, right? And I don't take any shortcuts in training, so I know that I'll have the energy to, to push through in that third round. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll well, go over to this. Sorry. Wait, hold on. I wanted to answer that one, too. That's a really good question. Thank you. Um, it's that there is no other option. There is no other choice but to succeed in the third round. And uh, it doesn't mean that you always will, but it means that you always have the mindset because that's what you've been telling yourself the whole camp. I do not have another choice. I will win. I will be victorious. I will go through the fire. I will take the best shot. I, if I get knocked down, I'll get back up. So you do not have another choice. You work too hard. There is no other option. I have a little Thank bit you. to add to that too. Um, I think that it's also uh, with every single fighter in the, in the UFC and every single fighter as a whole, um, a lot of us have a why. And I feel like that's what drives us, not just in the third round, but also in the gym. You know, it's not just easy for us to wake up every single day and, and get punched in the face and to go work out when we don't want to or to be sore. And that's when you really come in and you, you take into accountability your why. And that is something that drives every single one of us. You know, some of us have kids, some of us have past trauma that we've gone through, some of us have family that they need to take care of. And I think that that is what, at the end of the day, when you're in the hard situations, you go down and you go back to that and you remember exactly why you are doing what you do. And that's what drives us all, I think. Those are some beautiful answers. Thank go you. ahead, Kelly. I guess, I guess for me is like my family, you know, I, I, I I come from nothing. I don't play. I don't say that to play the victim. I say that because I've had to work for everything I, I have, right? So before I leave this world, I want to leave my mark on it, right? So that's it. Yeah, I would say for me, like everyone else, it's my family, but I also feel I'm built for this. I've worked so hard. I've sacrificed so much, gave up so much in my life to train and be the best that uh, I think I'm built for this. So win or lose, I'm going to go out there and give the best that I can give. Thank you. You guys are all killers. Thank you. Great question. Thank you. I forgot to say this from last Q&A. If you can just keep it to one question per person when you're up there, that'd be great. Go ahead. Thank you. My question is for Kelvin Gaslam. Um, I'm a reporter at KYMA in Yuma, Arizona. I wanted to ask you, um, why was now the best time to go down to 170? And was your decision impacted by moving on uh, with Fight Ready? If I can, I would love to interview you when you're back in Yuma, bud. Hey, White Town, baby. Absolutely. 
Uh, the decision was just based on me. Man, I just needed to make the decision, you know, to actually go through the actual sacrifice, actually follow a meal plan. Uh, that was just a decision that I needed to make for myself. Now that I'm a little bit older, a little bit more mature, a little bit smarter, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, I can make these kinds of decisions, and I feel like I, 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 I can and I will. That's why. Who's that? Who's that? Oh, uh, Joe Rogan. <laughs> oh, Joe Rogan. Got it. Thank you for that question. Oh, he fought through an injury to be here. Yeah. Hello. Love you too. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Josh. I'm from the 956 all the way to Rio Grande Valley, all the way down south. Um, I'm also representing We Talking About Sports podcast. Y'all should go and check that out on YouTube and all socials. One thing I want to know is before I drive to play basketball, hence the injury, um, I like to listen to some really hype music, like some Kanye West. I want to know what you all do when you're hitting mitts, prepping for the walkout. What's your go-to song or album when you're getting ready for an awesome Q&A or an interview, Megan? What's your go-to listen? Oh, is this, this is for me? For all of you, everybody oh, on the oh, stage. No, you guys can answer. He no. said your name first, so Megan, uh, we'll start. Honestly, I do have a song. When I... My husband makes fun of me, but I listen to the song called I'm Going In, um, Drake, Lil Wayne, yeah. Young Jeezy. That's really my, that's my pump up song. But now to the actual people that matter. <laughs> well, I'm going to do a lot softer song than Megan's. Um, I am very hardcore, Bilal. Mine is Taylor Swift, Shake It Off. Woo! Yes. Oh, really? This, this is a one person question. Are we no, no, no. Okay. We'll make a playlist for you after. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um... For me, I actually kind of like silence until my walkout song comes on because that's the moment that I like to change. No wasted energy. Everything is hyper-focused until it's the moment to kill. <laughs> and until it's the moment to kill, we just stay kind of, you know, I want everything. I want, my, I want to be able to think and process. And so for me, music at that point is a little bit of a distraction. And uh, I just don't I, don't, I don't, I don't like it. So <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Misha, is that also because you have two kids at home and it's probably a lot of noise all the time? Yeah, it's also very noisy all the time. So I enjoy my peace and quiet. Let's add that too. Any parents out there, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so I'm dropping down to 170, right? So I'm going on a lot of long runs, right? Burning those calories. One song that I frequent a lot is, uh, what is it called? Uh, Somewhere I Belong by, uh, what is it, Linkin Park. That's the one that I've been listening to a lot. Uh, I'm a lot like Misha, actually. I don't listen to a whole lot of music in the back. I don't really, you know, if people have music on in the back, I'm, I'm okay with it. But I don't really care to put on songs and, and music when I'm training and all of that. But uh, I get made fun of a lot in the gym because I like to listen to country while I work out. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't particularly have one song, but I go to several artists, Lil Boosie, Lil Wayne, Kevin Gates, NBA Youngboy. My little gangster side comes out right before fight time. So yeah, man, I get real. Great question. Thank you so much. We got to put together a playlist. Macy, correct me if I'm wrong. When you talk about being backstage, do you nap before your fights? No. I don't. I don't nap, but I I do bring a like a fuzzy blanket. I do. Chill. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah I always the bring blanket. a fuzzy blanket, but it's for the hand wrapping. I just I don't know. I like to be comfortable. Yes, I remember seeing that. Right, let's go over to this side. Go ahead. All right. This question is for Bilal Muhammad. As a current Philadelphian and a current Temple student, I need you right now to answer not only for your slander against Sean Brady. Your slander against the birds, but I need you to answer for your slander against a cheesesteak, a delicious meat sandwich. <laughs> I'm not happy, by the way. <laughs> okay, I, I'll, take it, I'll take it back. I do love the Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> but in general, your sports teams suck. <laughs> e A G L as Eagles! Let's go, Birds! Woo! Oh, yeah. Wow. Now that we have all lost our hearing, yes, sir, yes, sir. let's go over here. <laughs> Hello. So, I got a question for, um, uh, um, oh, I forgot the name. 
<laughs> well played, well played. <laughs> Next. Um, so, Bilal, do you think that you would be able to beat a healthy full camp Gilbert? I mean, I, I did beat a healthy full camp Gilbert. He no just, way. He There's just fought sure. Masvidal, didn't get touched in that fight. I was getting off the couch. I was eating ice cream. My coach was like, yo, put the ice cream down. You get paid money to fight. And I was like, all right, I'll go for a jog right now. So I got off the couch, went in there, beat him on three weeks' notice, and a guy who just got off of a fight, camp, everything. So, Okay, whatever you say. Cool guy. <laughs> How's it going? Um, first and foremost, I would like to appreciate each and one of you guys who sacrifices you guys' body for our entertainment. We love you guys. Each and every single one of you guys. My question is for you, KG. I just want to talk a little bit about the fight you had with Chris Curtis. What was that mindset like in your post-fight interview? You were really emotional. Can you go a little bit in depth about that? Yeah, man, I had been through some pretty low lows in the previous years to that, and uh, it was cool to overcome those lows, come out the other side successful, get a big win. It meant a lot, man. Thank you. All right, no pressure, but I hope it's better than the last question on this side. Go ahead. All right. Bilal, when are you gonna fuck up Leon? The proper term is fudge up, and uh, soon. I'm uh, waiting to see when they book that fight, hopefully uh, November, and then I'm gonna be waiting there, right there, front row, to get him next. All right, so, Macy, Macy, do I got a shot? I didn't hear you, I'm sorry, do, what? Do I got a shot? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> shoot or shoot. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. What's up, guys? I want to first thank you for coming out and experiencing the 30th anniversary with all of us fans because, you know, that's why we're here to see you guys. But my question is, what... UFC fan moment, did you experience yourself, not a fighter moment, but you as a fan of the UFC, have you experienced, like, what was your first fight, first UFC event, what, what was it? That was the greatest, you know? I would say my greatest moment, I think, was, uh, I was in London, and I did another one of these Q&As, and I got booed, and some old lady met me at the hotel, and she's like, you're the nicest guy in the world, I don't know why I was booing you with everybody. And I was like, thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Misha, I want to say one of my greatest was I was at 196, and I saw you choke out hauling them. That was awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. That, was, that was a great moment for me. Otherwise, I think there's just too many moments to list, man. You know, I don't have, like, a good Rolodex like that. Like, on the fly, I can't just – but probably from getting hit in the head too much, and I'm like – Wait, what is my favorite moment? I don't even know, guys. I wish I had a better answer for you, so I'm going to pass the... He doesn't have a good answer either. Yeah, you're asking <laughs> the wrong... I get hit in the head way too much. Yeah, you're asking the wrong guy. Um, okay, can you say happy birthday to my niece, Kiana, that's celebrating 21st birthday tomorrow? Happy birthday, oh, hey, Kiana. Happy birthday. Hey. Hey, first and foremost, uh, Kelvin and Bilal, thank you so much for being so awesome and gracious during International Fight Week. Thank you to all the fighters and everybody else coming through to Salt Lake City one more time so we can party with everything UFC. But my question is primarily to the female fighters on stage. My girlfriend Kayla is fighting her first MMA fight this October. What words of advice and encouragement do you have for her? My words of advice or encouragement would be take it all in. Enjoy every single second. Uh, this is a moment that you're never going to get back, so let it all go and take it all in at the same time. And, and never, ever, ever make it something that you don't enjoy. Remember that the reason that you are there is because you want to. You know, people ask me that all the time. Like, well, why do you want to fight? It's very simple. It's like, because I want to. You know, that's it. It's my choice. Yeah! You guys are yeah. giving great answers today. I love this Q&A panel. Let's go over here. Uh, hi. He's uh, texting. My, no, no biggie. My question is for Kevin Geslam. Um, I know this is UFC, but there's been a lot of UFC fighters transferring to boxing and stuff. 
So my question for you is, if you could fight any boxer right now, who would you box? Why not Canelo? Why not? Yeah! Heck yeah. That's awesome. That's all I got. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi there. I just wanted to say you guys are amazing in every aspect of the, of the word. But my question is, when you guys are on a cheat day, what do you guys like to eat? Yeah, my favorite cheat meal is nachos. Uh, any place in Utah, because Utah food's not been good so far. So if you got any good nachos places, let me know. <laughs> I like I like Taco El Gordo. That's, yeah, some some great tacos in Vegas. Um, I'm also a pizza girl. I mean, I can't really go wrong with pizza. So, um, and cupcakes, you know, all of the above. I don't, I don't feel like I like to always necessarily go to a place. Like I'm kind of like, I'm going to order this, all these things. <laughs> We're going to have it right here in the Casa, the Tate Casa. Tacos El Gordos. I can, I can definitely answer this one. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I like, I like, I like my tacos, man. I like, when I, I like to enjoy Taco Tuesdays. It sounds like we're all a fan of tacos. I would say tacos are a really good steak is, is my go-to. Man, I'm from Louisiana. Crawfish, jambalaya, you know how we get down. Woo! Louisiana in the front row, all right. <laughs> Can I put you guys on a place? Yeah. There's this place called Tacos Lopez that's down in West Jordan. You guys should go there, it's really good. All right, we'll do our Thank best. Thank you. Thank you. This is our first ladies' question today. Yes. yes. Way Thank to represent. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for answering our question. Y'all look great up there. I'm a huge fan. My question is to anybody who wants to answer. It's a little more competitive, maybe biased, a little bit of a potster, but McGregor, Chandler, who's taking it? It's not really a potster. I think Chandler knocks him out. Oh! For sure, Chandler all day. Oh, McGregor's old news. <laughs> ladies, ladies. I'm a Chandler fan, for sure. I think Chandler's got it. <laughs> I'll go the opposite way. I'll go with McGregor just to stir the pot. <laughs> I'm going Team Chandler. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. He's got his fight kit on, just in case. First of all, thank you guys for all the amazing memories you've given us. Um, this question is for Brendan Allen. Um, with Sean Strickland picking up some wins recently and, you know, picking up some more hype, you guys have met each other in the past. Would you like to see that fight again? I would love to see that fight again. Although I'm a realist, man, I think he deserves a shot to fight up. If that name comes across my desk, I'm going to give him the business for sure. And I would love to watch Mexico. I would love to watch you knock Sean Strickland out. That's your boy. <laughs> oh my God. Hi, my uh, question is for Bilal. You have Leon Colby looking like they're gonna be fighting in November. Who do you wanna win that fight and who do you think it will be the easiest path to the title for you? I mean, I wanna fight Leon because we have unfinished business. And, but I think Kobe's a way easier fight. So you're asking two questions. But me, I want to fight Leon. I think he has the biggest win streak. I have the biggest win streak. So if I, I beat him, I take his win streak. Thank you. And new. My brother. I like you. <laughs> go ahead over there. Hey, firstly, uh, respect to all the fighters. Uh, I got a quick question for Gastelum. Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier that you're going to be, you know, running a lot more, and I'm assuming you're probably going to change the diet a bit up to uh, drop back down to 170. I wanted to figure out um, what else are you doing maybe mentally to prepare for that drop again? Yeah, so I mentioned earlier, like, I, I hired a mental performance coach just a few years ago, and it's made a big difference, man. It, it, makes, it makes all the BS go out of the way, you know, and he makes you realize all the BS that's in your life. Get rid of it so that you can have a route to your goals. And uh, it's made a big difference, man. Thank you. Yo, how's it going, Megan? I'm good, thank you. 
This question's for Bilal. Do you think you could win a street fight by decision? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, I'll meet you outside, and then we'll find out. You and me? Let's right go. Here. Listen, you're not tough, and we're not going to do that again. I'll shut the mics off. Go over here. Yes, sir. I did see you flexing, yes, on the camera, so go ahead. Thank you so yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Can I go now? Yes. Okay, uh, before I ask my question, Misha, my mom's a huge fan, and... Uh, Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Love a good, um, love a good I was going to ask all you guys, what's your uh, dream title shot, any weight? Ronda Rousey. Yeah. I want that one back. <laughs> I would love that. But uh, honestly, I would take whoever's there, so it's all good either way. I would say GSP, one of the best to ever do it at 170. Woo! I'd say the same, GSP. Macy, do you want do you want Cejudo? <laughs> <laughs> do I want Cejudo? No, I want my rematch with Alexa Grasso. Ooh. Izzy for me. They say he's one of the best we've had, best we've seen. I want the best. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Question for Kelvin. With the win over Shavkat, do you think you jump in front of Bilal for a title shot? Or who do you want next? That's oh, third in the pot. One more time? Yes! Title shot. <laughs> no, he doesn't jump over me. Hell no. No. Who do you want next then, Kelvin? I have Shavkat next. After, if, you, if, you, if you take down Shavkat, who do you see yourself next? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It'd have to be the number one or number two contender. Yes, sir. We, we're all behind you, Kevin. You got it, baby. Houston in the house. How about them Cowboys? Come on. Hey. This question's uh, for Macy. We just saw you in Jacksonville. Per beautiful performance. Uh, who would you say is your biggest rival besides PJ and Zan? <laughs> well, I think it's pretty obvious it's Juliana Pena right now. That's right. Uh, but thank you for watching the fight. I agree. Did you expect to have... The beat with, did you expect that to happen? Like, for her to respond to what you had said? No, but I, I also am pretty vocal about what I think. And, you know, I thought that what she said against uh, Amanda was pretty ridiculous. So I'm, I'm not surprised. And I'm going to say what I want to say. And she came back. So if she wants to fight, I'll fight her. Excellent. We would watch for sure. This question is for Bilal. Hey, so since you started training with Khabib and his guys, you've talked about how much better you've gotten. My question is, can you give us any secret Dagestani tips on what's made your game improve so much? Uh, I think their mindset, like them guys, they just push you to another level. So whenever you think you're, you're done, Habib will make you go even more. And I think that's the difference between them and a lot of other teams and a lot of other people. Uh, but I'm trying to teach Brennan a little, little bit of that mindset. So Brennan is going to be joining me next time at Dagestan. Awesome. Thank you. I love the Patty's Pub Thank shirt. Guys. Shout out to Rob McElhenney, who is a huge UFC fan, so we appreciate that. We have one more over here. Go ahead. Bilal, yep. what do you think about all these bums, bro? I think you can smack them all real quick. Especially that guy right there. You need to step your game up, you got a long way to come. But Bilal, who's he talking to? You kill everybody. Who's he talking to? What do you think about these guys, dude? No contest, right? Who's he talking to? I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> Remember I, the name. I appreciate that. I do think that um, you know, none of these guys up here are bums, so I don't know who you're pointing at, but I, I apologize on your behalf. I mean, your whole division. <laughs> your whole division, brother. Nah, there's only two Nobody bums in the division, and it's Leon and Kobe. So I'm going to go for one of those, so I'm going to take my one of them, too. Okay. In my opinion, bro, you kill everybody. Usman. My brother, I like your opinion. Come shot. Okay, there are kids here, so let's, like, try and Dude, keep the I got foul language to a minimum. What's Thank you so opinion? much. We appreciate What's your opinion? Give me your opinion. Sit down. Okay, we're going to go over here now. Thanks. Next question. Go ahead. All right, my question's actually for you, Megan. You got a terrifying panel of fighters next to you here. If you had to fight one of them, who is it and how are you getting it done? I'm not fighting anyone. I mean, you I have to. No, no. no. <laughs> I can get myself into a nice verbal altercation, but that works. also, these are some of the nicest athletes we have on the roster, and yep. that's what's so beautiful about my job is 
I get to know them on a personal level. I get to um, tell their stories to the world that all deserve to be heard, and it's truly my privilege. So never would fight with any of them or never fight actually any of them, but you know, otherwise my mouth can't get me in trouble. But yeah, I we, we all got her back in, the good, in a good way. <laughs> Thanks, Risha. <laughs> appreciate the question, though. Yeah, for sure. All right, I think, do we have any more questions? Nope. All right, we are all wrapped up. Salt Lake City, thank you so much for coming out early. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Give it up one more time for this incredible Q&A panel.